And we're back with week five. Sorry I had to miss week four, guys. I was out of town on work. Let's jump right into it. Four of the first 13 weeks are in the book, and sadly, Jason is sitting on top. Now, as we know, not all schedules are created equal. Joe, Matt, and myself have had the easiest schedule so far, and Jason, Caleb, and Brandon have had the hardest. I do like that the three hardest schedules have all three played me so far. Now, for those of you that remember the season preview, I did have Jason, number one overall. He's actually fourth in points scored. You know, he's just had the hardest schedule so far. Now, taking a look at Jason and myself, we both are quite a ways ahead of third place for points four, uh, with me holding on with just a point over Jason. Both of us being the highest scoring teams, it is going to be a good match this week. But before we get to the matches this week, I want to take a moment to cover a story I didn't get to cover because I was gone last week. Now, going into Sunday night's game, the only player left is on Joe's team, and he's down about five points. Now, going into this match, you would think Joe's feeling pretty good. I mean, he just spent $33 on Samaji P. Ryan, who's his one player left, and all he needs is five points. And, of course, Samaji P. Ryan ends up getting those points. He ends up getting six points, actually, and Joe's feeling pretty good. But, of course, the one possible way that he could lose is what ends up happening. Samaji P. Ryan fumbles the ball, losing him the game, and also getting injured. And this is someone Joe had just picked up. This is just one of those crazy fantasy games where you thought it was over and then something crazy like this happens. Uh, it was a pretty enjoyable game to watch. I do feel bad for Joe, though. All right, so for the first matchup I'm going to go over, which is my matchup of the week because it's the two teams that are over 500 points for 4 and 0 versus 4 and 0. It's Jason Brando's versus myself. And I think we need to get one thing pretty clear. And that's that I do not like Jason Brando's. I never have, I never will. And I would gladly lose the next four games if it meant I could beat him this week. In a heartbeat. I hate him that much. So why have him in the league? Because every league needs a villain. And for me, that villain is Jason Brondos. This is the match I've been looking forward to since we started week one. And I'm really hoping I can pull a win out here. Now the big player he has that can really rain on my parade is Todd Gurley. Who's had two very explosive weeks. He's the number one running back right now. So this is someone I'm actually very worried about in this matchup. Hoping that the uh, hot streak can obviously end this week. Now for our next match, we have Caleb Brandos and Joe Hoover. For this one, I'm picking an upset, and I'm taking Joe Hoover to win the match. Look, I know this is a huge upset pick by me. Joe has the easiest schedule in all of our league and only managed one win. But, you know, I think he's had some bad luck, whether it be injuries or that fumble to lose him a game. And, you know, I think Le'Veon Bell's getting a little better. I think fantasy might just turn his his way this week. And maybe by the grace of Zoe, he can pull off an upset win here. So for our next matchup, we have the champ, Bishop Mike, versus Caleb Brandos, which is, of course, Thomas Peterson. I'm going to go on a limb here and say Thomas finds some sort of tight end to start, and it probably works out for him because, hey, it's Thomas. I will say an interesting pickup that Mike has is Blau Pow. We had a pretty good week last week because, shocker, Matt Forte got hurt. I think Powell could be useful for Mike going forward, especially because a lot of people considered him done for the year. And Mike is actually favored to win this game, so I guess it's somewhat of an upset that I'm picking Thomas even though he is the third highest scoring team in the entire league right now. Now for our next matchup, we have Brandon versus Sadie, where I have Brandon winning in a very close game. This is also another big upset pick by me. I mean, look at Brandon's two starting running backs, Isaiah Crowell and Chris Johnson, but I'm still going with him. Brandon's the lowest scoring team in fantasy football, so it's kind of hard to try to pick him to win a game for once, but I think he does have some pretty good players hidden throughout his roster. He just has to... Somehow put it all together one week. I do think that Crowell has been terrible so far this year, but I think he could actually have a good week and start turning a season around starting this week. And as you can tell from this video, I think uh, last week is just the beginning for Mike Wallace. I think he'll start getting more and more involved with that Ravens offense. This combined with my concerns for Sadie's two starting running backs, Jonathan Stewart and Ajayi, I mean, if I'm ever going to pick Brandon to win, this is the week. The next matchup is between Jason Cole and Matt Ehrman. In this matchup, I have Cole losing to Matt. I think this makes Cole pretty happy because he's been pretty angry. I've been picking him to win so many weeks, and then he loses. 
Cole's actually had a lot of close games this year, and I think that one player he could really use to start popping off would be Martavius Bryant. Whether or not that happens, I don't really know. I'm not a huge believer. I think he's had pretty much one relevant catch all season, which is the one playing on this highlight. You take that away, and he's had zero good weeks all year. Martavius Bryant has always been a boomer bust player, but I think there is a lot of analysts this year that said he would be a great player, and maybe even a top 20, top 10 wide receiver, depending on who you're listening to. So to see him only have this one relevant catch all year is kind of surprising. I think that he could possibly turn it around, which would really help Cole's team. However, I do expect Matt to win. So moving on to our next game, we have Josh versus Brad Roberts. And I actually have Josh winning this game. I think Frank Gore could have a pretty big game for him this week, but the guy I wanted to highlight on his team was Hopkins. The offense for the Texans is starting to look a lot better. Uh, Bill O'Brien, I guess, is starting to figure some things out. And they're definitely starting to feed the ball to Hopkins more and more. Uh, I think this looks good for Hopkins moving forward. And obviously, he was we already knew he was a good wide receiver, but I think Josh can pretty confidently just start him every week now moving forward. Let's just hope that he doesn't take uh, too much away from Lamar Miller. So just to quickly recap, I have... Myself winning, Josh, Matt, Brandon, Thomas, and Joe winning this week. The last thing I want to talk about was our first trade of the year. I'm actually surprised it took all the way till week five to uh, have our first trade go through. Of course, if you talk to Josh, this is actually the second trade of the year. So what was the deal? Well, he had the 28th overall wide receiver and the 71st overall wide receiver for the 11th overall running back and the 20th overall wide receiver. Now if you put the faces of that trade on the board, you can see why that trade made any sense at all. Now Julio does have a bye week and a little bit of an injury. I'd say Kenny Britt is unimportant to this trade. We all know Julio Jones' potential, so you can see why I would trade a high-ranked running back and wide receiver for him. Of course, the big question mark for me and the reason I wanted to get rid of him is Crabtree, no longer having Carr. I don't know if EJ Manuel is going to be able to feed him the ball quite as well. They have a good O-line, and I know they're going to throw it, but my concern is Amari Cooper starting to get more looks. Good luck to everyone in Week 5. I've got a game to go watch, so I'm going to stop this video here, and I'll see you all next week.